A few years ago, the provincial government in Ontario had a new sex ed curriculum they wanted to place in the schools. Parents were outraged to the point that former Premier Dalton McGuinty abandoned that plan. His former education minister is now, in fact, the Premier. Kathleen Wynne wants to bring it back, but she doesn't really want to talk to parents about what's in it. Kevin Gaudette is here and Dr. Jess O'Reilly, welcome. How are you? I'm well. Um, our parents, I think the, the first concern is it's really difficult to talk about whether or not a curriculum is appropriate for kids when you don't know for sure what's in it. That's right. Well, back in 2010, it really was released. I'm not sure if you recall. And there was quite a long consultative process. It was two years long. They consulted with over, two, over 2,000 stakeholders. I know parents, students, 70 organizations. So this is a bit of a follow-up. Um, so I'm not as familiar with the follow-up, but I'm definitely familiar with the process they went through in 2010, as well as the curriculum documents themselves. Well, now they're saying they don't want to talk to parents, that the principal will pick one parent from a school and that's good enough. Yeah, I think that amounts to about 4,000 parents. So, I mean, this isn't terribly uncommon when it comes to curriculum. So it's not as though we come out with a curriculum in math or science or English. Yeah, but it's not controversial when it's, you know, math. Not as controversial, that's true. But there are other controversial subjects around equity, around history, around um, any of the social sciences. So, yeah, I think that uh, maybe this will be a bit of a learning curve and they'll go back to the drawing table. But I will, I mean, this is a little different than any other curriculum because there was two years of history and two years of research. And as I said, I mean, the Catholic Archbishop Society was consulted as well as stakeholders in the field, parents, teachers, I think over 2,000 parents and teachers and students in the first round. So this is more of a follow-up. Kevin, you've been writing about this. You're concerned about it. Well, I had leaked to me the curriculum because I'm a parent of three children at three different school levels, actually, in Ontario. And I wasn't consulted. I wasn't given any information. And I would like to be. And there was a special parent with a special parent advisory board and a special principal who shared those concerns, shared them with me. And they don't know what's being, what's being consulted on. I think we have a couple of the questions. The questions are awfully mushy. So the, the, uh, the question comes up, and you're, at, you're, you're asked... Um, whether or not you, what, what aspects, I can't read it from here, I'm sorry. Um, I believe that it's important that my children see themselves reflected to, in the curriculum. Well, well everybody's going to say yes to that. I mean, that's such a, a what does that mean? <laughs> so, so the parent says to me, she says, in consultation with the other members of the parent, parental advisory board, she doesn't know how to answer that question because she's afraid of how it's going to be. What does it mean to be reflected? And then they go on and talk about issues of diversity. It is important to me that my children are exposed to all kinds of diversity through the school curriculum and in this case they're referring to sexual education curriculum and they further define diversity in another place with respect to ethnicity religion intellectual ability and again the parents say they don't really know what it means for a sex ed curriculum to have religious diversity or ethnic diversity and yeah. that concerns them. Well, Jess, I think this is, your parents sort of think they're being baffle gabbed here. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. I think that we need to consult more with parents. I'm not sure that this is the time or the place because I do believe that those two years of consultations were quite thorough. And as I said, that process was quite um, engaging. Having said that, I would love, I, would, I think that parents should have a say in this. I don't think it should be a 100% vote because we don't have the time or the resources for that. We have to remember we're dealing with curriculum that is much older than our students. This curriculum is from the mid to late 90s, 1998 and 1999 it was released. So that was a totally different landscape. So we have to do something. 85% of parents across Canada are very supportive of comprehensive sex education and they understand the outcomes. And I think that you're probably right that there just needs to be more openness, um, a little bit more specific if we're going to talk about, when they talk about diversity, for instance, they'd be talking about same-sex relationships, they'd be talking about gender diversity, and I, these are things that across the board Canadian parents do support, so they, oh, they but, don't want to have the wool pulled over their eyes. Okay, they don't, and the issue is not whether a particular issue is appropriate to talk about, it's what age do you talk about Absolutely. it. And if you recall, one of the major concerns that mm -hmm. parents had was it was too much too soon, mm -hmm. and I remember back then people calling my radio show mm -hmm. and saying, what kind of an agenda do some of these people mm -hmm. have? It doesn't help that one of the people crafted it now is charged with child pornography charges. So when you've said what kind of agenda do these people have, mm -hmm. there's one of your answers. Yeah, I think that's a very difficult parallel to draw, though, that the one 
person who may have been involved in the process. He was very he's, important he's to the process. But he's a criminal. Yes, and but I he don't... was very important to the process. Okay. He wasn't just some guy in the back office. Right. What was so, he doing specifically in the development of the curriculum? They he was helping they, craft it. And they won't tell us. So okay. the concern that these people who share these documents with me is the backstory there where you have a consultation process that went on, as, as you mentioned, and that consultation process, including Benjamin Levin, who's now charged with seven counts of kiddie porn, just created a, a curriculum that exploded and the parents hated. But not all parents hated it. I mean, when we a heck of a lot, enough there parents was a, to even were, cause Dalton McGinty to pull it off the table. In an election time, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, when he they wasn't talk famous about for listening to the people. For same-sex relationships, for instance, they, I would not argue that it's too much too soon. The reality is that kids as young as one, two, even younger, are aware of same-sex relationships because they have same-sex parents. But they don't talk about parents. masturbation and anal sex. In and does a grade three... Anal sex was grade seven. And, and that, I don't want my 12-year-old daughter in grade seven getting that education. I will guarantee I'll you they're going to get I'll that choose, education. I'll choose for myself to have those conversations with my children at home when I think so they're So will Google and so will YouTube and that's why all the research shows that we have to go and learn these things in a controlled environment with compassion and with context. Nobody think, wants to I, teach your kids have, how to have I have a controlled it. environment I, in my home. Right, I don't not think all, Benjamin not all Levin kids have is that. better than Google. I don't have... <laughs> okay, I will agree with you that if we're talking about somebody charged with child pornography, it's probably important to separate that from most of the people, the vast majority, not even 99%, 99.9% .9 of people who contributed to this original All right, curriculum. let me ask you this question. Is grade three the time to be asking kids to try to puzzle out whether gender is a social construct? Absolutely, I think it could be. too young for that. Not at all, because that could be as simple as, all right, is this a girl toy, is this a boy toy, or can both boys and girls and all people play with this toy? When we're talking about age appropriate, we're not talking about let's teach them how to do things, let's teach them how to challenge the norm in the streets, we're talking about the things that there are already talking about. So again, we're never teaching kids this is how you have sex. We're talking about this is what yes, it they is. Do. This is what no. Well, but this is the concern I'm afraid. Dr. But I was Jess, a teacher. I'm an Ontario College of Teachers uh, member, and I'm very familiar with this curriculum. All of my research was in the current sex ed curriculum and looking to the future. Well then, what, how, what do you make of teachers putting up uh, posters, uh, carrying uh, phrases and words I can't repeat on television, and in fact, if I said them in a classroom, I could be arrested, and yet some teacher puts this up in front of kids. The, and when, when those incidents happen, mm -hmm. and the teacher is not reprimanded for it, mm -hmm. and you have the, the Benjamin Levin thing, and these incidents come out, and then we get secrecy from the government, do you wonder why the public is a little concerned? I am absolutely concerned about secrecy, but I would challenge connecting the dots in terms of a teacher who breaks the law or a person who happens to be working in government who's broken the law. So I think one of the other parallels that's challenging for parents is, is the context of the focus of this, that the, the school system and the minister and now the premier are spending a lot of time and energy on this sex ed curriculum at a time when math and reading scores are plummeting and we as parents question the focus. So we've got mm -hmm. school systems, we've got schools that are literally crumbling and school test scores from the core curriculum that really matter mm -hmm. plummeting and here they are tink tinkering and screwing around with the possibility of worrying about whether or not my three-year-old can properly identify certain sexual elements in a weird curriculum. I'm not sure it's a weird curriculum. I don't think that they've let math or, or the languages fall to the wayside either. We're working, I believe they're working on all of this. And the other thing is, again, this is curriculum that's almost 20 years old. If we don't do something about it, our kids are the ones who suffer. And all the research shows that comprehensive sex education does nothing to hasten sexual activity. It actually helps to delay sexual activity and helps young people to enact positive health outcomes. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, guys. Appreciate having you. Thank you.